Okay, let's continue with the vertebrates. These are the reptiles, class Reptilia, the reptiles. A diverse group of vertebrate animals, which are one of the most ancient from all the vertebrates, especially the groups of the turtles and the crocodiles. They very early emerge from the evolution. Like the fish species and the amphibians, they don't have constant uh, body temperature. So their body temperature and their activity respectively is uh, dependent on the temperature of the environment around them. So in the temperate regions, the reptiles are not active during the winters or very rarely some quite well adapted species for cold weather are active. So it can be said that the reptiles is uh, even more sensitive to low temperatures than the amphibians because I told you about the newts which reproduce during February here in the temperate regions and it's quite cold during February in the water, especially in the water. So it's considered that, that uh, reptiles originated from a group of from the amphibians. And there are a lot of paleontological evidences. And one of the most ancient order of the reptiles are the Rhychocephalia or the so-called Tuataras. These are very interesting. Maybe they look like you to some of the species of iguanas, for example, but they are not iguanas, they are Tuataras. One of the ancient reptiles, they are lizard-like, but they are not lizards too living in New Zealand. Scientists recognize few species of them and all are in danger. As I said, they are occurring in New Zealand and one of the most interesting things about them is the presence of a third eye. This feature was characteristic and in ancient times for some of the amphibians and some reptiles. But during the process of evolution, uh, it uh, became a rudimentary organ. And the Tuataras being a very ancient reptiles, they have a third eye. Of course, it is again rudimentary, but in the young individuals, it is uh, sensitive to, to sunlight. So it has a sort of a function, if it's vestigial. And it is a quite, uh, becoming quite rudimentary organ in the adult ones. But it's well visible and, as I said, light sensitive in the youngsters. So this is interesting about the Tuataras. The other order of the crocs, crocodilia. And there are, of course, few groups in the crocodiles. So again, ancient group of reptiles, all adapted for tropical areas. Maybe one of the most cold resistant species is the North American Mississippi alligator, which is occurring quite north and uh, differing from the other crocodilian species uh, that can uh, hibernate during the winters. Of course, some other species of crocodiles also are adapted for relatively low temperatures. For example, the Nile, Nile crocodiles, which are one of the most famous, when they occurred in the River Nile because they are exterminated. The Nile crocodile is not occurring in Nile, if you have to know it. 
and it's a lot uh, quite polluted river and with uh, very heavy anthropogenic pressure. But in the ancient times, in this uh, North African area, especially in the in the delta of, of Nile, these crocodiles occurred in, in during relatively cold winters in this region. Uh, relatively cold, maybe if, if you uh, went in North Africa, you know how the winters are there. No, not uh, uh, temperatures below zero, but it's relatively cold, especially in the water habitats. The true crocodiles is one of the groups, uh, and the Nile crocodile, which I mentioned. There are some species in uh, South America and in Asia. The caimans. These are a little bit different, having these scales above their eyes. And they are a little bit like horns above the eyes, short muzzle and uh, not so big. But some species from South America can be quite large and very, very rarely can attack humans, but it's not their habit. So uh, caimans can occur, as I said, in South America, from, for example, in the catchment of Amazonka River, or in Asia. There are some very endangered species in the region of Asia, in China, for example. And the alligators, which I mentioned, mentioning the Mississippi alligator, Again, rarely attacking people and large prey, they are feeding mainly on uh, b uh, water loving birds, fish, and other relatively small animals. They, of course, they can attack domestic dogs sometimes if uh, the specimens are big. The gavials with this very interesting thin muzzle, they are feeding mainly on fish. It's adapted for catching fish because they live in very large, slow running rivers, which are very muddy, muddy waters. And with this very sensitive peak like uh, muzzle, they uh, can catch fish even in such waters. Endangered species, critically endangered, especially in the areas of India, in the river Gang, and other heavily polluted and uh, negatively anthropogenic influenced rivers in Asia. The other order of the turtles is to Dinapa. Having this specific shell-like scales, which are called carapax. The part of the carapax, which is on the back, is, called, is the typical carapax, and this on the belly is called plasprom. Again, ancient group of reptiles. And in contrast with the tuataras and the crocodiles, which were predatory species, they are no herbivores. Turtles are a diverse in this ecological point of view uh, concerning their diet. They can feed on a variety of, of food. They can feed, they can be predators. They can be scavengers, they can feed on vegetation and some invertebrates, fruits. All of the reptiles are reproducing by laying eggs. This is specific because in the stage of the reptiles concerning evolution, the hard-shelled eggs emerged. 
for the first time and it is connected by their terrestrial way of life. The eggs of the amphibians, when we compare to them, are soft, jealous and not just jelly-like uh, and uh, are developing into water, as I mentioned in the previous lecture. Um, these ones in the reptiles are more drought resistant and developed on land. So while um, some terrestrial amphibians going into the water to reproduce and to lay legs, in reptiles it's the reverse situation. The species which are adapted to live in water go out of the water to lay their eggs and go again into the water. Like the sea turtles. Maybe you're familiar with them. And there are a lot of movies about laying eggs of the sea turtles. So remember this interesting fact. The difference between amphibians and the the reptiles. And the groups of the turtles. Firstly, the marine turtles living in the oceans. I have chosen the examples from our area of Europe here. These are our marine turtles. Maybe one of the most famous. The careta, living in the Mediterranean mainly, but all over the world. It's one of the widely distributed species in the salt waters of the earth. You mentioned uh, here, I remember uh, you were uh, on the Zakynthos island in Greece where they lay in great numbers their like, eggs. But there are um, other areas. Uh, very important for turtle, turtles again in the south uh, area of Pe Peloponnesus in Greece, in Turkey, in the area of the uh, Mersin area, Mersin town at the Iskenderun Bay. A species which is uh, widely distributed in the Mediterranean, the Pelonia Midas. Other species of the sea turtle of the Mediterranean. And uh, what are the factors for uh, decreasing of their numbers? One of the problem is the tourism in the sandy beaches where they prefer to lay their eggs. The other are the plastic pollutions floating into the seas that these turtles like to feed on seaweed or jellyfish, which are looking very much like the floating uh, plastic bags, for example, on the surface of the oceans and the seas. And they're making mistakes and swallowing these plastic bags. And uh, after time, they uh, fool their digestive tract. They can not go out of the animal and they are dying from great suffering. Also, they are drowned by fish, fishermen nets. So, a critically endangered species. The terrestrial tortoises, other group, and the species which occur both in uh, for example, in Greece and Bulgaria and in Europe, some of the species are the, the Testudo Greca and Hermione. These are vegetarians feeding only on green vegetation or fallen fruits from the trees. Very rarely, especially when uh, the females have eggs inside, fertilized eggs, then uh, they are developing inside them. They can eat uh, um, carrion carcass. 
if they find uh, that uh, animal, they can bite a little bit from, from it. And it's essential for developing of the eggs inside the female. Endangered uh, and the main factors for decreasing of their populations are, for example, the fires, forest fires. Also, where the wild boars are a lot not controlled, with, if there is no predator to control them or hunters do, do not control the wild boar. For example, in areas where the grey wolf is, is uh, exterminated and there are a lot of wild boars, they can decrease a lot the population of the terrestrial tortoises. And the situation all over the world and, uh, is similar because also many people uh, use them as food source. In some areas of uh, Bulgaria, for example, this all uh, happens. These are some differences between the two very similar species, these two scales. The scales at the tail area are specific. And the other group, species which are adapted to live in fresh water. These are the pond turtles. And we have here the European pond turtle, widely distributed all over Europe. Emis urbicularis, a species which is mainly predatory carnivore species, but sometimes can eat plant matter. The pond slider, Trachemis scripta, is an invasive species in Europe, especially in southern Europe, including Bulgaria. Greece, Spain, France, I think maybe in Italy. This is a North American species which is, which was used as a pet in the near past, but now the species is prohibited in many countries because when owners uh, do not want to, to care anymore about these animals, they release them into the nature and they adapt to our environment and begin to even to reproduce. They are very aggressive, eating uh, large specimens can eat uh, even uh, the eggs of the water birds. Uh, this is behavior which is not familiar to our European uh, pond turtles. We have a few species in Europe, pond turtles. So the, these are uh, causing a damage to the ecosystems of Southern Europe. And there are some project, ongoing projects about monitoring of these uh, invasive species. The other freshwater species which maybe you are familiar with are the alligator snapping turtles of the North America. They inhabit the same areas with the Mississippi alligator. Very often uh, they are in competitive relationships because this is also one of the largest predators in the fresh waters of North America, of the southern areas of, of North America. For example, the swamps of the Florida. Very strong animal, eating uh, even some vertebrates and uh, can uh, bite and cut uh, human fingers uh, with ease. You can see here this uh, cutting edge of the upper jaw. It is uh, like a knife. And uh, here you can see what is important for turtles about their structure of the mouth. They do not have teeth. In contrast with the, the previous ones, the two Ataras alligators where teeth were well developed. Turtles do not have teeth, but they have very sharp and hard jaws, upper and both upper and lower jaw. 
they cut pieces from the food. It doesn't matter, is it plant or animal food, and swallow them whole. As a whole, the chewing is not uh, specific for reptiles, even some of the higher groups, as the lizards and chameleons, for example, can chew a little their prey, to smash them a little bit and swallow them after. Also crocodiles are making few bites, and after this swallow, for example, the whole leg of the antelope with the, with the hoof. <laughs> yes? I said uh, North America, in the areas, for example, in the swamps of Florida, where the Mississippi alligator occurs. In the order of the scaled, so-called scaled reptiles, considered as higher groups, the lizards and the snakes. They emerge relatively late in the evolutional stages. These are the higher reptiles. The first three groups were, were the primitive ones. The true lizards, group of the true lizards, suborder Zauria. While the distributed species, the European green lizard, and this is a male with this specific blue coloration of the head, of the scales of the head, during uh, the breeding season. These are very contrast, especially in the breeding season during spring and summer. There are, of course, some similar species to these. For example, the striped lizard. This is uh, with its old Latin name, Lacerta viridis, the European green lizard, and the other, which is very similar, a little bit larger, is Lacerta trilineata. The other group of the geckos. This group of uh, lizard-like creatures is distributed mainly in the tropical areas. Very, very few species are adapted to live in a little bit colder climate, like uh, here in Southern Europe, in Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, there is only one species of gecko. Uh, for example, in uh, going south, in Greece, there are two species of, of geckos. Going more south, in Egypt, there are more than five species of gecko. And going more south, to Kenya and Uganda, they have more than 20 species of gecko. These are adapted to live in mainly in, on vertical surfaces and mainly in human settlements. They live on the walls of houses. And geckos are distributed in the so-called Old World, in Africa, Europe, and Asia. Of course, and in some of the islands of the Indian Ocean, for example. For, the, for example, on the Seychelles and Madagascar. And what is interesting, most of the species are active during the night. That's why they like tropical areas, because not having constant temperature of the body, they rely on, on the air temperature. And the air temperature is high during the night in the tropical areas. And this is the European species, the cultured gecko, which you can find anyone here in the region of Staratsgora city. And one of my favorites, uh, the geckos were also one of my favorites, by the way, the skinks. These are looking a little bit uh, like the 
true uh, lizards, but are not. Specific for them is that the transition between the body and the tail is very smooth. The tail is not well differentiated from the whole uh, snake-like body of the, of the animals. Also, very often the legs are very short compared to the legs of the true lizards. Also, their scales are very smooth. When you hold a skink, it is very smooth, like a not a living creature. Again, mostly distributed in the tropical areas. Only one species here in the Balkans. I think in Greece is another. In Bulgaria is one species, the short-legged lizard, very small, I think, in the size of about a little bit more than 10 centimeters, larger specimens. And a great variety in the tropical areas of the skinks. The chameleons, also tropical group of reptiles, but we have two species in southern Europe, and two of them occur in Greece, in southern Greece, the African chameleon and the common chameleon. It is distributed all over the Mediterranean, from Spain to Turkey. And maybe you know what is specific for chameleons. They can change hair color, depending on the surrounding environment or a, a specification of their behavior. For example, when two males are um, fighting for a female. Also, their legs are adapted for climbing on branches of bushes and trees. And they're modified like claw-like structures. Their fingers are connected and their leg is something like a pincer with which the animal is crawling on the branches. This was the second bizarre thing about chameleons. Also, their tail, they can use it as their fifth leg. They can support their body when the tail is uh, going around a branch and it's their fifth leg. Also, their eyes can move independently. One eye can look forwards, the other backwards, for example. And the other stuff, you know it, of course, their, their tongue, which can be projected a few times longer than their body to catch their prey. And they are predators, they are feeding on small insects. Some, the larger species, can feed in on some small vertebrates, also small uh, reptilians, frogs, or mice, or other small mammals, or birds. A great variety of species on the island of Madagascar, in the Indian Ocean. Uh, about 50% of the species of the chameleons occur on Madagascar. You can imagine what a diversity is in this area. There are some pygmy species, which are just a few centimeters, uh, which are not climbing on the bushes and trees, living in the leaf litter of the forests. And they are huge, gigantic, for chameleon, of course, species in Madagascar. This is the other European species, the chameleon, chameleon which can be met in the Mediterranean. And the snakes, suborder serpentis, the serpent of snakes. 
These are the youngest in the evolution reptiles. They emerged later. Late there the latest group of the of the reptiles. From of course legged forms. And if you look at the at the skeleton and the body of the snake in detail, you can see especially in some species rudimentary legs. Of course, this is not unique in the evolution of the reptiles. There are and some lizards which are without legs. And there are some species in Europe, of course, from them. But uh, the snails are mastering it and uh, moving without legs with their muscular body. The vipers are one of the groups of the venomous snakes. And they developed unique structures in their mouth, a poisonous, venomous glands, and the specific fangs with a channel into which the poison flows and they are biting. And they are biting by two reasons, to catch their prey, to immobilize it, kill it and swallow it, and for protection. And they are biting people for protection. All incidents with poisonous snakes are concerning the protective behavior of the snakes. Very rare, the, the reasons could be other. The vipers are diverse even in Europe. There are a few species which you can meet in, in uh, the European continent. The common viper, the Peramoditis, for example, also occurring in these hills over here. The, the most, uh, one of the most venomous snakes in Europe is occurring in Greece. And maybe in South Bulgaria, but it's not uh, found till now, and it has to be searched. The so called uh, viper from the Xanti, the Peraxantin, because uh, it is occurring in the area of Xanti town. It is a big species, very big, and uh, you have to be careful when you are walking in the woods, in the forest of this area. The grass snakes, these are not poisonous and they're killing their prey by strangling. This is one of the few pictures of mine. This is my hand with this wonderful uh, European rat snake, which is uh, rare in Bulgaria. It's warm loving species and it's occurring in south, very south parts of Bulgaria, but it's widely distributed in Mediterranean. There is, I chose also this uh, photograph to show you how look one very similar species, they are very similar in coloration, one North American uh, rat snake, and it is used as a pet, uh, very, very widely used as a pet, so maybe in your career as vets uh, you can meet such uh, similar to this coloration snakes, and they also need uh, veterinary help in some of the cases. But this European uh, rat snake is an uh, endangered species protected by laws in the European Union. And uh, if you make this snake, uh, of course, you don't have to kill it or harm it in, or take it as a pet. For example, here I took the picture, of course, release the animal back into the nature. I met this species in some areas of North Greece, for example, in the Pangeo Mountains, and uh, I think in Kalkidiki, I'm not sure, but it's, it's uh, widely distributed in the warm parts of Southern Europe. The pythons, uh, 
maybe you are familiar with them again strangling their prey and swallowing them whole they are not chewing like all the snakes all the snakes you have to know are predators they are not any snakes which swallow watermelons for example they are swallowing animals one of the largest snakes of the world the amazonian of the world amazonian uh, anaconda the reticulated python living in asia feeding on very large prey for example small deer antelopes small crocodiles Some species are invasive, introduced the, uh, the Florida lakes in North America are invasive and reducing, for example, the population of, of local endangered animals. Very often used also as pets. So, as future vets, maybe you will meet and some pets like this. There are some variations uh, which were um, created through selection, which could be yellowish or white pythons, very often used as pets. And the class of the birds, these are our living dinosaurs. So, in the near past, the dinosaurs were thought to be reptiles, but they are not. Dinosaurs originated from reptiles. So reptiles are ancient, more ancient than the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs evolved from the reptiles and the birds evolved from the dinosaurs. These are our living dinosaurs. An example of these velociraptors. For having these feathers on their front legs, on their tails. And all, we know all this by uh, paleontological evidences, by fossils. And one of the groups of the birds evolved from the raptors. It's very hard to imagine that these geese and ducks are in relation with the velociraptors, but it's true. They are related somehow. Orders. One of the widely distributed orders, of course, the Anseriformes. Geese and ducks. Examples of the, some European species. Uh, Anser albifrons is the geese, white fronted goose, and the common duck, Anus platerinchus, which is the ancestor of the domestic ducks. The birds of prey, the daily, the urnal, the urnal birds of prey, Falconiformes. There are three main groups. The eagles. Here, the example is with the golden eagle. The hawks. Here is the gosh hawk. And the falcons. These are the three main groups of the the urnal birds of prey, order Falconiformes. A lot of interesting stuff can be said about them, but we don't have enough time. For example, the golden eagle is one of the strongest, strongest birds of prey in Europe and in the world also. On second place, after the harpy eagle, of course. But the golden eagle can even kill very large prey and naturally feeds on some young jackals, foxes, can kill young um, deers, for example. There are some um, 
nations in Asia, like the Mongolians or the people of uh, Kazakhstan, which are training these eagles to kill even wolves. The hawks are specialized mainly on feeding on birds. They are very skilled bird catchers. Here, this falcon, the peregrine falcon, is adapted to live in big, even in big cities and feed on the large populations of pigeons. And the group of the night birds of prey. These are the owls. Here you can see the eagle owl, which is as strong as the golden eagle. And having the advantage of the night, sometimes can kill even golden eagle and eat it. Also, the eagle owl can kill and large prey like some species of vultures or ravens. And one of the smallest owls is this otoscopes, which is migratory and being migratory because it is feeding mainly on insects. The scopes owl, making very specific uh, sound uh, during its breeding season in the spring. Maybe you heard it. It's very, very popular during April and May, during nights. Something like this. Maybe you heard it. <laughs> and this one is the Harry Potter's owl. <laughs> this is the so-called barn owl. Barn owl. Tito Alba. Living in human settlements, uh, that's why it's called barn owl. Living in old barns, for example making uh, its nest there. Very good species when you study small mammals. If you are zoologists who want to, to know all the small mammals in the area, you go to a resting site or nesting, nesting site of the barn owls, and you collect the remains, remains of its food. And they are called pellets. They are bowl-like structures Resembling, uh, resembling faces, but they are not. Uh, these are consisted of small bones, skulls, and uh, feather or uh, hairs of their prey. So when um, these owls, they are swallowing uh, the whole prey, and they are preying mainly on small mammals, shrews, rodents, mice. And when they swallow the prey, it's digested into the stomach. But there is a narrowing between the stomach and the intestines. And this uh, undigestible stuff, the skulls and bones and uh, feathers and hairs cannot pass into the intestines. And when they are going uh, to accumulate a lot, they are going out again to the, uh, peak, to the mouth of the animal. They are vomited by the barn owl. And they are accumulating in these particular areas. And it's much, much more easier and natural, a non-invasive method. You don't have to kill the small rodents or shrews in the area. Just check these pellets. And they are entire skulls of all the small mammals in the area. Because this is not selective predator. It is eat, eating everything, every species. Uh, from the small mammals uh, in the area. The pigeons, order columbiformes. These are again two main groups, some larger ones which are called pigeons and the smallest doves. Pigeons are domesticated and some of the species of the doves. So again, as your future vets, maybe you will meet such patients. The hens, Order Galliformes. These are the hens. A lot of species are hunted, like pheasants, for example. But 
We are familiar with the domestic hen, which originated from Asia. And the songbirds. The songbirds is the richest on species uh, order from the birds. The common sparrow, on which is named the order. In Latin, it's uh, genus Passer, Passer domesticus, the domestic sparrow. It's widely distributed in Europe. And the robin, one of the favorite bird of the Britons, for example. But widely distributed in Europe, also in Bulgaria. You can hear their, their song uh, very rarely, even in the winter areas. They are not migratory and uh, living constantly in uh, small territories. Some are making some migration, vertical migrations from the high mountains to the low areas during the hard winter months. The mammals and last emerged in evolution, but you have to know that birds are younger than the mammals. Mammals originated together with the dinosaurs from the reptiles, but were suppressed by this great diversity of species of dinosaurs. And they used to exist all the time during the kingdom of the dinosaurs. And after the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, this group of animals uh, went through a, a boom of evolution and a lot of species emerged, even very large ones, not as large as the dinosaurs, but maybe you know a lot, especially from the elephants, species of the mastodons and other, uh, from the rhinoceros also, So these are again warm blooded and most of them, which are higher, give birth to their young. But the most special thing for the mammals is the presence of hair, which have a function similar to this of the feathers of the birds. So insulation, mainly, constant body temperature, as I said, and all the mammals are feeding their young by special glands, by a liquid which is produced and are, is called milk. The most primitive monotrematons are very close to their ancestors, the reptiles. Not very well regulated temperature of the body. And what is specific for them? These are the three species of echidnas and the platypus. They are laying eggs. These are the most primitive mammals and they are reproducing by eggs. Living in the areas of Australia and some in uh, New Guinea, the big island north of Australia. The marsupials, a little bit younger in, during evolution. They are giving birth to young, but, but the youngsters are embryo-like. They are not well developed. They are, they are without hair, they are blind, and they are very, very, very small. So by instinct, they crawl to the glands of the mother and swallow this gland and the gland reaches uh, far away inside the baby through its stomach and feeding the youngster this way till it uh, grows enough. Also, they have a structure of their skin which is called back. They are living in this um, back of the, of the mother when they uh, grow. They grow. And some examples, the possums, kangaroos, the Tasmanian devil, and many, many more species, diversity in Australian continent mainly, but some species of possums occur in, in the south and uh, the southern part of North America. And here you can see the young 
kangaroo in the pouch. This pouch is uh, the most proper term. In the pouch of the mother. <coughs> And the placental mammals, the higher group of the mammals. So the youngsters are living <coughs> in the uterus of the mother and are fed by an organ called placenta. After their birth, they are relatively well developed. They have uh, Uh, here, the eyes are relatively well developed and their size is quite good. <laughs> and the orders, some of the orders, the carnivores, these are the families of the cats or family felidae, divided into two groups, large and small cats. The largest small cat is the North American cougar or puma or, or mountain lion, but it's not a lion. And one of the smallest of the large cats are, for example, the smoked leopard from Asia. The largest cats in the world are the Siberian tiger, is the Siberian tiger. The other family, the bears, Family Ursidae, bears. Largest predator on land is the polar bear. The other family, Hyenidae or Cainas. They are not dogs. They are most similar to bears, for example. More, more related to bears than the dogs. Large animals can reach up to 80 kilos. One of the ferocious predators of Africa and in ancient times in Europe even, the spotted hyena. And the dogs, family canidae, the gray wolf, jackal, different types of jackals, foxes. Family viveridae, viveras, civetas, living mainly in tropical areas. The family Mustelidae. Here we can uh, we uh, see the Wolverine, the largest Mustelid, which is very aggressive species living in the northern forests called Taiga in the Siberia or northern Europe and Canada. And the smallest from the mustelids is the weasel, the European weasel. In this uh, family are included also the badgers, otters, polecats, martens. The artiodactyls, these are herbivores, and in this group are included interesting groups uh, giraffes, camels, pigs, deers. Antelopes, Perisodactyls, Tapirs, Horses, together with the donkey, Rhinoceros, the Rodents, group of the squirrels, mice, beavers, capybaras, and the steppe mice. The wagumors, these are the rabbits and hares. And the ohotonas, these are mice-like creatures, but they are relatives to the rabbits and hares. Ohotona. Ohotonas. The insectivores. 
and they are now saying that they are eating mainly insects, hedgehogs, the moles, the shrews, and water shrews. These are the four main groups. The bats, Heroptera, order Heroptera, again divided into two groups, two main groups. One are large, are the fruit bats, living mainly in tropical areas, very rarely can be seen in the Mediterranean. There is one species, Rosetus aegyptiacus, the Egyptian fruit bat, which can be met in some parts of, of southern Turkey, southern Greece, southern Spain, I think. And these one, which are small insectivorous, microhiropterans, microbats, they are feeding mainly on insects. They are predators. And most of these species are using ultrasound for orientation during the night flights. Many live in caves, many in human settlements, a few of them in uh, tree hollows. Very beneficial, reducing the amounts of the pest insects in some areas. Um, all the species protected in the borders of the European Union. And our order, the primates, again, few groups, these are called hemi monkeys or lemurs, galagos, Great diversity in Madagascar, but there are species of, of galagos also in Africa, in Asia, true monkeys, and the apes. And our genus Homo, Homo sapiens, only with one species. Our species.